what I want to do tonight is, 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 is try to show how stuff changed, how stuff began. Uh, my stuff didn't begin as architecture, and it didn't begin as art. It began, it began, it began as, write, as writing. So I want to show how, at least the way I see it, how, how stuff went from one, from one form, from one, me, from one medium to, to another. Uh, I just want to see if I know where the. Uh, someone warned me that I couldn't see the arrows, but I, I can. I can see them. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I started. I started as. I started as a write, as a writer. Towards the end of the time, I was writing from say 1966, 67 to 69. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted, I I wanted to I wanted words to be maybe what they they can't be. I wanted words to be matter. I wanted words to be material. Uh, I I wasn't so interested in I wasn't so interested in looking through words to content to meaning. I wanted I I I I, I wanted the, the 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 words themselves maybe to be carriers of meaning. Not by what they, not by what they expressed, but how they moved on a page. In other words, when I was writing, what interested me was questions like, how do I move? How do I move from left margin to right margin? How do I move from one page to the next page, next page, etc.? This was a time, or at least uh, 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 this was a time when I and I think a lot of people were paying attention to statements like uh, the French writer Raymond Roussel who said things like, uh, a book should begin on the first page and end on the last. Or a Gershwitz Stein statement uh, about how maybe every short story and every, and every novel should end when everybody dies, because the only place they exist is in that, is in that, is in that novel. OK, so in a time influenced by, by writings like that, by statements like that, I wanted, I, I wanted things to be as literal as possible. I I began to uh, I began to think I couldn't use on a page a word like tree, a word like chair, because that referred to another space, a space off the page. I wanted words to refer only to the place they were on, so I could use words like here, there, at that time, in that place, w uh, words that referred to my action. My action on my action on on the on the on the page. The attempt was always to make things as literal as possible, beginning a poem with a period, and then playing on the notion of period. I have made my point. I make it again. It now you get now you get, now you get the point, or an attempt to an attempt to do a poem that that writes writes itself, starting starting with the starting with the phrase let it go go into the dictionary and then writing down every word after the word go until i reach the bottom the bottom the bottom of the page uh, Probably the last piece of mine that I that I thought of as a piece of writing was a uh, uh, or or I don't know, I don't know poetry so much but maybe more writing writing is writing in general. Uh, the last piece was was uh, used a, used a page from a book on reading speed, how how to improve reading speed, and the title I gave to it was the time taken for me to walk from such and such a street to to such and such a street. In other words, an attempt to make reading time equivalent equivalent to walking time. By the time I did I did a piece of writing like that, I thought, well, the writing had now taken me off the page. It had taken me off the page into actual space, physical space. So, so at the end at the end of the 60s, in, in 1969, context changed. No longer did I think of myself in a writing context, but I thought of myself in an art context. Why art? Because at that time, I think what 
interested a number of people in art was that art seemed to be a kind of non-field field. Words like conceptual art, for example, were starting to be used. In other words, art seemed to be a field that maybe didn't have any particular characteristics of its own, except for the fact that it could be called art. So that art was a field into which you could import from other fields, from psychology, from, from history, from history, from, from, from news. <clears throat> okay, once I, once, I, once I had put myself in an art, in an, in an art context, uh, the basic question I had was all my life, and I was, you know, I wasn't necessarily very young at that time, I was, I was 29 in, 19, in, 19, in 1969, and it was a time when, you know, people were, were starting to become kind of uh, uh, well-known in an art field at the age of 25, 26, so I was probably a kind of late starter. Uh, 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 w w w once I was in this, 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 what was to me a new, a new, a new field, uh, the, 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 the question I had was, or the problem I had was, all my life up until that point, I knew what my ground was. My ground was this eight and a half by eleven piece of paper in front of me. Now I had taken myself away from that page. So the question was, now that I'm, now that I don't have the page anymore, now that I'm in actual space now that I'm in physical space what 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 makes me move there what gives what gives me a reason to move there so pieces for me started with trying to find a reason a reason a reason to move this was a this was a this was a a, a, a 1969 piece done for a program called Streetworks in which a number of some artists some poets were asked to were asked to, uh, to do to do a piece uh, to do a piece over the period of a month to do a piece involving the street specifically New York streets the piece I did had a very simple scheme each day each day for that month I would pick out at random a person a person walking a person in the street each day uh, sorry each day, each day each day then I would follow a person follow a different person each day until that person entered a private place, home, office, whatever. So that following episodes ranged from, say, two or three minute episodes, when someone might get into a car and they couldn't follow, ranging from that to seven or eight hour episodes. Someone might go to a restaurant, a movie, etc. Okay, with regard to the question I had, now that I'm in real space, now that I'm in physical space, actual space, what, could, what gives me a reason to move there, doing pieces with schemes like this gave me that reason. Once I had decided on the scheme of following a piece, of, of following a person, decisions of time and space were out of my hands. I could be tied into another person's tied in, uh, another person's another person's time and time and space. Uh, and this is something I think that 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 uh, that I've always done throughout, and, and I'm I'm not the I'm not the only one. Uh, in other words, a, a piece didn't start with trying to get a visual effect. A piece started with giving myself a set of a set of a set of directions. Recent, uh, somewhat somewhat recently, some people in in a country studio who are you know very very computer adept. When I when I expressed jealousy that I didn't know the kind of computer programs they know they knew, uh, said to me that, but you were working, you, you were kind of thinking like a computer from the beginning. A computer, a computer follows a set of, a set of, a set of directions. Uh, okay. Uh, after 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 doing pieces like this like this for a while in in 1969, I started to have I started to have a nagging doubt, and what I liked about this piece was that I was a kind of moving integer, subjected to the scheme of following of following of following some somebody else. At the same time that I liked that, I started to have questions because I'm a, I'm a person. Maybe I wasn't making enough use of the person 
personness of my of my person. Uh, if you could if you could apply a language to these first pieces, the language might be something like I, a person, an agent, attend to it, a world considered as if it's out there. I find some way to connect myself to that world. Okay. Once I started to have once I ha started to have questions of myself being subjected to this to this scheme, uh, I started to, the, the motion of pieces started to change. Rather than I attend to it, a world considered as if it's out there, uh, I, start to, I start to attend to me. I concentrate on myself. Uh, <clears throat> how do I prove both to myself and others that I'm concentrating on myself? One obvious way is to do something physical to myself, apply some physical physical stress to my body. Once that physical stress is applied to my body, uh, uh, maybe the body, maybe the body can adapt to that stress. Maybe the body can change because of that stress. Some background at this point. I think, I, th I think my work, and at that time there were a number of people in different countries, some in the United States, uh, some in Holland, some in, some in Canada, some in Italy, uh, uh, all trying to do something with their with their with their body, it was the same kind of thing. I think that uh, that that well, uh, uh, the kind of common language at that time was was people talking about finding oneself. So I think I think in a time where the common language was finding oneself, I think I and probably a number of other people felt that what else can we do? The time is already doing this. We have to try to do maybe what the time what the what the time what the what the time is doing. Uh, music of that time was probably was probably was probably the surest readable time uh, read, read, readable sign. Uh, long songs, single voice. Uh, uh, Van Morrison, Neil Young, a long, a long song because time was needed to, to meander around the self, try to, try to, try to examine the self. Okay, uh, an example of these, you know, what people called, again, the names that people gave to, uh, to certain kinds, to certain methods, probably very rarely or maybe never came from art do they probably came from they probably came more from from curators from critics uh, so the you know words like body art were used here or were used in the United States and in, in Europe it was much more uh, uh, action 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 art uh, but an example or what what I what I was doing was this long film a long film called 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 conversions a three-part film the uh, the, the notion of film uh, uh, should be commented on. Uh, the way I you know, and a lot of people did film at that time, uh, you know, we, we didn't really have money to do film, but we certainly had money to buy, buy a simple, uh, everywhere available Super 8, Super 8 camera. So most of the time I would set up a camera in front of me, I would then stand in front of the camera. The ca and I think the notion of being in front of, of the camera started me thinking of how these, how these, piece, how these pieces should be. The camera is in camera language, shooting me. The camera is doing something to me. Maybe I, in turn, have to then do something to me, to myself, to my body. Okay, the film, be film begins in darkness. After a few seconds, there's a light moving around on, on the screen. The light is a candle that I'm, mo that I'm moving around in front of my body. The candle is the light, so the light source for the film. As I, uh, as I move the camera as I move the cat the uh, as I move the the candle close to my chest close to my breast the camera zooms in and the rest of uh, the rest of the rest of the film the rest of part one of the film is spent in me using the candle the light source for the film using the the candle to burn the hair off each breast once 
once the hair is removed, pulling, pulling at my breast in a kind of futile attempt to develop a woman's breast. Hence, hence the name of the film, the name of the film, Conversions. Uh, the, uh, obviously, there were there were easier ways to look like look like look like look like a woman. Uh, these pieces, at least the way I saw them, was it was the effort maybe to do something that I probably couldn't do. I could keep pulling at my breast uh, as long and as hard as I wanted, but it never was going to happen. I think the way I thought of these pieces was, could I set myself up as a kind of little engine that could? You know, I think I can, I think I can, but I really can't. <laughs> but my will is going to make me possibly, possibly believe I could. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, one one reason one reason to do to do pieces that 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 involved turning turning on turning on 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 my, on my on my body was that again I I thought the pieces I wanted the pieces to be about about concentration how do I prove how do I prove both to myself and others that I'm concentrating on myself one obvious way is to do something physical to myself. Uh, uh, drive my own person. There were there were ways to maybe separate myself into subject and object. I I I treat my treat myself as me. Uh, <clears throat> After, do, after doing pieces like this for a while, in, 19, in 1970, I started to worry that the pieces were, the pieces were too self-enclosed. I start an action, and the action ends in me. So in effect, I'm making this circular movement around myself. I started to, I started to worry if I'm making this circular motion around myself, I'm enclosing myself in a kind of closed circle. There's no place for a viewer. The viewer is a, the viewer is always an outsider. The viewer is a kind of wire looking in on some secret, looking in on something that he or she shouldn't see. So I started to think I have to break the circle. I have to break the circle of myself and start to and start to approach 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 another. So there was a kind of sidestep uh, in 1971 when pieces were done uh, not just by me but me and some and somebody else this was a piece called called security zone done at uh, at an empty pier in downtown in downtown New York pier seven pier 17 uh, uh, all of these piers don't exist anymore uh, Battery Park City exists and said etc uh, th 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 this, this was a, a, a show organized by a, by a kind of magazine publisher named, Will named Willoughby Sharp, who did a, a show called The Pier 17 Show, asked a number of people to do, to do, a, to do a piece on the, on the, on the, on the, on the pier. I, I wanted to do something that would be done specifically with somebody, with somebody I didn't trust. So this person I didn't trust and I are on are on the pier. The directions to the camera people were that uh, uh, they should shoot from far from far from far away, uh, zooming zooming in because it seemed like if I wanted to do a piece with a person I couldn't trust, there couldn't be other people there uh, who possibly I might have trusted. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I, I'm, bl I'm blindfolded. Uh, I'm, wear I'm wearing. I'm wearing. I'm wearing ear earplugs, so that I'm moving at. Uh, I'm moving around at the far end of the pier, and the only, you know, the only, the only, the only thing that can prevent me from possibly walking off the pier is this person that I don't that I don't trust. So the hope was this was a piece that could improve a person, a personal, a personal relationship. Uh, <laughs> Doing, 
pieces like this seem to be a kind of sidestep, though, because what was bothering me in pieces in which I acted on myself was the fact that I was making this closed circle around myself. This made the circle bulge, but it didn't break the circle. In other words, uh, this person is concentrating on me, I'm concentrating on this person, a viewer, if there is a viewer, a viewer uh, who might be looking at a photograph, etc. A viewer is again always a kind of a kind of outsider. I think what bothered me most about about a piece like this was I started to think I'm only ma I'm only making theater, and a lot of us at that time who were doing who were doing live action wanted the stuff to be different different from theater. Uh, one of the things I think that that made theater theater was was re was rehearsal something could be done something could be done over and over again I very specifically tried to do pieces that I, I wouldn't do again because the, the pieces I, I, I chose to do, the pieces I did, were pieces that I really didn't know if I could do. I had to sort of work, my, work myself into a frame of mind that could do them. If I did them a second time, then uh, uh, the first time would have been a rehearsal for the second time. There was one piece that I'll, that I'll talk about in a while that was done for a number of days over a two-week period. Uh, that, was a, that was different because, well, I'll, I'll talk about it more when I come to the piece, but it needed time because I was trying to become part of the part of the space. But anyway, that was like a year or so, a, a, a year or two, a year or two after 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 that. Okay, so this notion of I still hadn't hadn't broken the circle. It started to become clear that uh, the. The people I had to approach were you, you viewers. I had to face. I had to face you. I had. I had to do something in relation to you. I had to do something with you. This started to happen with some pieces in 1971. This is a piece towards the end of 1971 called 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 Claim. Uh, the space. The space is a two le is a two level space, street level and basement. Uh, <clears throat> As viewer, as viewers come in, there's a vi there's a video monitor that was that that previous image, a video monitor next to the door leading downstairs to the basement, so that the video monitor act as a kind of announcement to visitors, maybe maybe a kind of warning to visitors, seeing and hearing what's going on by means of the video monitor, a person decides whether to open the door, come downstairs. The piece is a is a three is a three-hour piece. I'm seated on a chair at the foot of the stairs in the basement. I'm blindfolded and I have with me two lead pipes and a crowbar. I'm, const I'm talking, constantly talking, talking aloud, saying things like, I'm alone here in the basement. I want to stay alone here in the basement. I don't want anybody to come down in the basement with me. I'll stop anybody from coming down in the basement with me. I'm alone here in the basement. I want to stay alone. In other words, using talk as a kind of uh, as a kind of as a kind of self self hypnotism, trying to convince myself that this basement is mine. So whenever I hear someone coming down the stairs, I swing the lead pipe, swing the crowbar in front of me, as the title of the piece says, claiming claiming this space. Okay, what I liked about what I liked about the piece was that I thought, okay, I had I had I. I had, I had found a way, finally, maybe, to to make the subject of my pieces I, I, and 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 you. Uh, what started to bother me? What started to bother me about these pieces was that uh, <clears throat> was that. I was in a still point at the bottom of the stairs in the basement. Uh, visitors are being asked to come down to come downstairs. Visitors are being asked to get through crowbars and uh, and lead pipes in order to get to me. In other words, I realize I think I'm setting up an extra grandiose position for myself. This isn't two people facing facing each other. Sorry, uh, this isn't. Uh, sorry. So 
sorry, the, 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 the slides change a little slower than, than I want them to, but I can't, can't quite control that. Uh, okay, so I thought I'm, I'm setting up an extra grandiose position for myself. And maybe this started, this started me thinking that everything I thought I hated about art, art as, art as a kind of religion, artwork as a kind of altar, artist as a kind of priest, it started to seem to me that my work, my work was not just confirming but enhancing. So I needed to find a way around that. I, I, and I thought the problem was, the, the problem was the successive focus on me. As soon as people came into an art space, I was the, I was the, I was the focal point. So I wanted to find, oops, sorry. Uh, I wanted to find ways around focus on myself, which, which, which made me think, rather than being a point in the space, can I try to blend with the space? Can I mix with the space? Can I become part of the space? Thinking like that led to, uh, led to a piece in the beginning of 1972, uh, uh, a piece, call, a piece, a piece called, called Seedbed, conventional gallery room. Uh, and it was in, it was in when galleries were, 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 were on, on, on West Broadway. It was at Sonnabend Gallery at 420 West, West, Bro West Broadway. Uh, conventional gallery room, about 25 feet wide, about 40, 40, 45, feet, 45 feet long. Halfway across the room, the floor, the floor becomes a ramp. The floor starts to, starts to rise and goes to a height of about two and a half feet, three feet at the far, at the far, at the far wall. So that, uh, so that when people, when people come in, the, come in the gallery, they probably walk, they're walking on the floor, probably without thinking about it too much, they start to walk, they start to walk up the, up the, up the ramp. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the piece is done for a number of days, uh, done or maybe say performed, activated. The piece is done for a number of days uh, from, uh, from uh, maybe, maybe three times each week from opening time of the gallery to closing time. So from 10 o'clock, from 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning to six. I'm, I'm underneath the floor, I'm underneath this ramp, moving around under this space where people are walking. And my attempt is to constantly masturbate. Uh, in order to do so, I use, I, I, I use visitors' footsteps as, as, as help. One thing, one very important thing I didn't, I didn't mention. As people are walking up the ramp, as I'm under the ramp, voice, a sound, my voice comes from under the ramp to over the ramp. I'm saying things like, I'm doing this with the person on my left, I'm, I'm touching your hair, I'm running my hand down your back, etc. Uh, every, every now and then, uh, Every uh, every now and then, the masturbation the masturbation reaches 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 climax. A person on top of the on top of the ramp on top of the floor might be thinking something like, "Oh, he's done this with me. He's done this for me." In any case, an attempt to join private space under the floor with more public space more so, more social space over the over the over the floor uh, on, on top on top of on top of the floor uh, okay what I what I what I liked what I what I liked about the piece was that I possibly was making a way was making some way to make contact with people without my taking the position of this kind of of this kind of, of this kind of star 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 figure uh, what I started to wonder about what I started to wonder about though that uh, uh, <clears throat> What, what I started to wonder about was uh, 
is my work starting to get stuck in another time? If that, if that notion of finding oneself was a notion of the late 60s, it wasn't the late 60s anymore. It was 1972, 1973. I think people were having different notions of self. Maybe self existed only, only, as, uh, only as part of a social system, a political system, a, cult a cultural system. So by the by 72, 73, 74, I and a number of people I think that were thinking of their work as action and performance started to started to think it had to it had to go it had to go elsewhere. And most of the most of the people who were doing performance by the by the by the mid by the mid seventies were doing what people called what but again, I think again a curator's word or a, or a critic's word. Uh, inst installations. Uh, there are a lot of art. There are a lot of vague terms in art. Uh, installation is probably one of the, one of the vaguest. Anything is installed. A rug is installed. A table is installed. A painting is installed. So those of us who were using the word, who or whose work was being uh, talked about as installations, probably made a made a concerted effort to try to think why. Why was I doing this? And specific, I think, to the way I was I was doing installations was that at that time I kind of made a point of not having a piece in mind until I was given a place, a gallery or a museum to show the piece in. The reason was I wanted to do something that I, I wanted to examine the space. I think in the back of my mind, though, you know, what I was doing was was nothing as nothing as grand as this. In the back of my mind was the notion, and this was something very much, very much on people's mind at the time. The notion, of, the notion of a of a guerrilla fighter, the guerrilla fighter examine, examine, examines the territory, tries to find out, you know, where are where are more people, where are fewer people, where can you play, where can you where can you place this bomb? I was only doing a piece and not not place not placing a bomb, but I thought I could take clues from the from the space I was work I was working in. I wanted, I the hope. Was was that maybe this piece, maybe the, the specifics of each particular place could lead me to do something here that I couldn't do anywhere anywhere else. Again, that notion of the non-repeatability of pieces. Uh, <clears throat> uh, um. Why did I, I? But I, I should. I should try. I should mention why did I want pieces to be, to be so specific to a place? Because I really didn't believe in the notion of art or anything really as a universal thing. The way I saw it, maybe it meant something at this particular place, at this particular time, at another place, at another time. It would either mean nothing or mean some mean some mean something different. That notion of facts was always important. I didn't, I didn't talk enough uh, with regard to very early work about, uh, about the importance, the importance to those of us who were doing this kind of work, the importance of, uh, in the United States, in the United States, demonstrations against the Vietnam War. Demonstrations against the Vietnam War was a suggestion that, a suggestion that people maybe could be instrumental. You know, there was a time when a lot of us started to believe there could be there could be a revolution in the United in the United States. So so the notion of person was person as 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 instrument. Person, maybe one person alone couldn't do it, but a number of people. Uh, a few people talk to others. The group gets bigger. Maybe a demonstration occurs, maybe at least the beginning of a rev of a of a, rev of a revolution occurs. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, back to the 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 mid seventies. Uh, this is a piece called "Where We Are Now." Who are we? Who are we? Who are we anyway? Uh, <clears throat> 
uh, again, Sana Ben Gallery, though changed at this time. When Ka when when Sana Ben Gallery opened at 420 West Broadway, it was a kind of single, unbroken space. When spaces are un when spaces are continuous and not divided by so many walls, the emphasis is on floor. By the mid 70s, I think galleries started to realize they were they might have been getting attention, but they needed sales. Uh, so walls were built. Anytime galleries, anytime galleries think that that they can sell, they need walls. They need walls to hang paintings on, but they also need rooms so that uh, so that rather than one single unbroken space, the gallery dealer could bring a possible collector into a room. There they can be relatively private with something on the, with something on, with something on the wall. Uh, Okay. The, uh, this is uh, the the uh, what was usually used as the main room of the gallery, that black wall, and the uh, at the at the right of the slide. Uh, the doorway is blocked is blocked off. The outside the outside the outside of the room is paint is painted black. Next to the black room. Uh, uh, next to the black room is a long, long table. Uh, next, to, next to the black room, there's a long, there's a, there's a long table, a long, a long wooden plank, stools on either side, on either side of the table. Uh, the table is propped up on the windowsill of the gallery, and then continues out the window. So, what began as a table becomes a becomes a becomes a diving board. Uh, uh, Above the table, there's a hang, there's a hanging, there's a hanging speaker. Uh, there's a, a, a constant clock ticking, and over that clock ticking, my voice comes in saying things like, "Now that we're all here together, and what do you think, Bob? Now that we've gone as far as we can go, and what do you think, Barbara? Now that we're satisfied." Uh, <clears throat> uh, Okay. Uh, in, in, in other words, it was an attempt. It was an attempt to make a piece that would be something like a community, a, commu a community meeting meeting place. It was an attempt to make a place where, by having these stools, maybe people coming into the gallery would sit would sit would sit on the stools. Uh, uh, the, the, the way I was thinking at that time was maybe maybe I had found a way to make a gal to make a gallery or museum uh, to turn a gallery or, or museum into something like something like a public a public space something like a community meeting place but as I thought that I started to think but I'm, I'm probably fooling myself a gallery or museum is probably Probably never going to be a public place. If I really think I need a public place, I'd better find some way for my work, for my, for my, for my work to to get there. Uh, okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> So I started. I started to think that I have to find a way that I can that I can that I can do architecture. If I want things, if I want if I want pieces of mine to be in in a public place, in a plaza, for example, in a park, on the street, there are disciplines that already deal with those spaces. There's architecture, and maybe industrial design, maybe landscape architecture. So I started. I started to think. I have to, I have to, I, I have to try to teach myself, uh, teach myself architecture. I have to find a way that people could be part of my, part of my pieces. So, uh, uh, in, in the early, in the early 80s, uh, uh, Pieces came kinds of rehearsals for architecture, maybe kinds of games of architecture. This was an, a 1980 piece called uh, called called Instant Instant House. Uh, 
uh, four flags, American fl uh, four, four, four walls, American flag covered on, on, the, on the floor, a swing, a swing in the middle. If a, person, if a person sits in the swing, the swing starts to go down, and these flags start to rise up, making this, making this instant house. And the instant house is a United States flag inside a Soviet, a Soviet flag house, house, house outside. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what, I, what, I, what I liked about that piece was that when a person gets up from the swing, the walls then, the walls now go back down to their, to their orig, or, orig, original position so that the, uh, the, uh, the sign lasts only, only as long as a person keeps the instrument going, keeps the ve keeps the ve keeps the vehicle going. Uh, though, though I, I like that notion of a person is kind of responsible for the for the house. I started to think that, but a house has to be something that you go back to. A house has to be something that you can re you can revisit. So through the through the through the mid 80s, uh, stuff started to be uh, you know my versions of prototype 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 architecture. If an architect does a dream house, maybe I, as a non-architect or as a kind of pretend architect, maybe I can do a bad dream house. So uh, uh, a piece a piece consisting of three upside down houses, two upside down houses tilted, leaning. Uh, uh, leaning against each other so that they support a third upside down house on top. Uh, uh, the upside down house on top, more of a kind of garden house, glass house. You go, you go through, the, through the open gable, you sit at or pass by an upside down table, or you go upstairs to what used to be the underside of the house. Now that it's upside down, they're facing sets of seats or bleachers, or you go further upstairs, further upstairs to the uh, uh, to the glass house. Some walls, some walls transparent, some walls mirrored, some walls, some walls, some walls opaque. Okay, it was around this time, the mid '80s, and especially the end of the '80s, that I started to think, if. Uh, if I really wanted to take architecture seriously, I I could no longer work as I as I used to work. I had to work I had to work with other with other with other with other people. I had to work uh, I had to work with people who did know did know architecture, but the piece the the pieces the projects whatever we did had to come from uh, from a number of us. Thinking, 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 thinking together. So a country studio started at the end, at the end, at the end of the 80s. Started very small. Uh, it's still small, but at that time it was one, one person, one person who had gone to architecture school plus me. Now it's a little bigger than that. Uh, five, five design, five designers, five, five people, five people who are who studied or studied architecture. Uh, uh, five people, five people plus 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 me. The way a country studio doesn't work is uh, I have I have an idea for for a project and these people carry it out or help me carry it out. The way it does work is we talk together. We uh, uh, maybe I start a project off with a general idea. I I I think after after doing work for now quite a long quite a long time. The thing I do best is have, is have general ideas. The thing I do best is think is thinking is think is thinking words. But this, when the studio works, the studio works maybe because it's that it's that combination, it's that combination that was said that was that was talked about in the beginning. Can it be a combination? Combination? Can it be a combination of poetry on my part and geom and geometry on the part? On the part of the rest of the rest of the studio, can it be? Can it be? Can it be? Can it be a collision of narrative, narrative, and by and by and biology? Uh, 
One, one of the reasons the studio started was that I started to be, I started to be very, very uh, almost obsessed with English language phrases like the person who lives by the sword dies by the sword that I translated into uh, if a piece begins with one person, if a piece begins private, maybe it ends private. So I started to think, how does something become public? Maybe, maybe public starts with 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 the number three. One is a solo, two is a couple or a mirror image, the third person starts an argument, and probably public starts when an argument when an argument starts. Okay. Uh, so in the, in the, uh, through the through the 90s, I mean, people didn't know us as ar as architects. Uh, they knew me in an art in an art context. So the kinds of uh, the kinds of the kinds of pieces we were at, we were asked to do were so called so called public art public public art projects. Uh, some 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 examples. Trying to uh, this was. Uh, this was uh, uh, a renovation of a community center uh, in, Arvada, in Arvada, Colorado, near Denver. The architect's plan, the architect's renovation plan, called for a spiral of grass outside, outside the building. At the end of the spiral, there's a, there's a concrete wall. The concrete wall goes, goes goes in goes in the building and goes goes through the building we were asked to come in afterwards which is what public art usually does uh, uh, come in afterwards and do something with the wall our starting point was was where the architect started with this spiral of grass outside the wall so we started to raise the spiral making this glass wall holding in dirt holding in earth so the glass wall starts to climb up, climb up the concrete wall. It goes into the building and continues to grow up, grow up, grow up the wall. So now, when you go, when you when you go into particular rooms, you go through the, you go through this this dirt this dirt wall there are niches cut into the dirt wall so you can sit in you can sit in the dirt wall uh, when the dirt wall reaches the top of the architect's wall there are openings at the top of the architect's wall so now it folds over folds over onto the second floor of the building and probably if we had more money than we did it would have gone throughout the throughout throughout the building but for us it was a kind of it was a kind of story. Art, a kind of start of uh, you know can, uh, can can if public art comes in afterwards after after the architecture can public art be a kind of can public art leech on to the architecture can public art act as a kind of parasite for people of my generation I think a, a, a big architectural influ influence was the Ridley Scott movie uh, movie of Blade Runner in in 19 in, 19, in 1980, a very different notion of the future than Stanley Kubrick's 2001. Stanley Kubrick's, Stanley Kubrick's view of the future is it's all white, it's all abstract. Uh, the Ridley Scott, the Ridley, the Ridley Scott Philip Dick notion is that, well, you're never going to have enough money to build everything, everything from the ground up. So you take already existing existing buildings. You take you take them over. You live you live on a on a on a building. Uh, another 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 example of a uh, of a uh, public public art project. This was the site of a project we did in 1995 at Queen at Queen at Queens College. It's in front of the English Department building. Uh, on either side of the stairway. There's a uh, there's a there's a concrete pedestal on top of which is a concrete sphere, a three foot three foot diameter concrete sphere. So those spheres acted as our our, star, our starting point. We thought, you know, maybe wh what if we replicated those spheres? At that time, and I probably made a statement that you know, once the stuff became more like architecture, maybe I shouldn't have made the statement. But uh, uh, I said at this time that public art. Public art should should make a kind of cancer 
on, archite on architecture. Architecture is the is the established the establishment building. Public art comes comes in from the outside. It comes in because of one percent for art laws. Uh, uh, I I wanted to believe at that time that art that public art could be the kind of uh, vo uh, voice of the minority. It can come it can come from the margins. After doing so-called public art for a while. I started to think that 1% uh, for art laws means that the art is worth 1% of the architecture. But anyway, we and some other people, I think, I think tried. But back, back, to, back, to, the, back to this project. Uh, now that there were those two, those, those, those two existing spheres, we filled the space with more spheres, uh, ranging from very small, uh, one and a half foot in diameter, going through the existing three foot diameter sphere, going to, going two spheres, uh, uh, twelve feet in diameter, 15, 15 feet in diameter, so you can walk, you can walk through the spheres. Uh, you can sit. You could sit inside the spheres. As it becomes as it becomes night, light lights lights come on, so the spheres start to glow. And what what maybe what used to be a pass through space maybe became at least for a while a kind of a kind of a kind of a kind of meeting 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 place. There's one last example of public public art. Uh, a project we did at the Philadelphia Airport in, 19, in, 19, in, 19, in 1998, we were asked to do something at the end of the ground floor at the, at the airport. So our starting point was: uh, this is the end. This is the end of the floor. The end of the, the end of the ground. The, the end of the first story. The floors have nowhere else to go here. So all the floors can do is rise up. So a terrazzo floor kind of uh, folds over itself, makes a seat. Uh, in the middle, uh, the terrazzo floor goes upstairs to the mezzanine. At the right, me mezzanine, mezzanine carpet comes, comes down. Uh, when the uh, when 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 the floor when the when the floors kind of roll up, fold up, it's replaced. It's replaced. They're replaced by by planting. Here up upstairs, the terrazzo floor comes 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 up. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, for the re for the rest of the talk, I want I want to come closer to close closer to the present. Uh, and, and once the, the, the way we think of architecture is, uh, uh, we think of architecture as a kind of as a kind of multi multi design. We you know, there's a possibility of starting close to the close to the body. Can we start? Can we start? With, can we start with clothing? Uh, when, once we start once we start with clothing, then we can go further and further out. So so clothes are kind of important to us. Though we haven't we haven't we haven't we haven't made many examples yet we've been working on a a new ver a a new version of an um, of an umbrella it would be made of uh, it would be, be made of a uh, a uh, a two way mirror mirrored my, mylar material uh it would be based on the idea of ruffles in clothing uh so that the combination of umbrella and ruffles would give us what we call an um, an umbrella uh, it has some differences from the conventional umbrella. You can tie tie one end to your wrist, one end to your, one end to your waist, so your hand your hands are free. You can uh, you can use it as a kind of shawl. It's easy to have another person with you with you in the um, in the umbrella. I wanted I wanted in this part of the talk to give to to show some things that we, we haven't really finished yet, and we don't we don't even know where they where they can go 
slow. But, but one, uh, one thing that's on our minds a lot is the notion of magnetic fields and attractors, repellents. So we've, we've tried out a version, though we haven't carried it far. Can we make a clothing based on the notion of attractors and repellents? You can pick five points on the body, two nipples, a navel, penis and penis or vagina, and an and asshole. And now can you, can you treat some as, as repellents some as attractors, so maybe you can have many, many lines that would eventually make some kind of some kind of some kind of clothing for the Venice Architectural Biennale. At this past this past year, we uh, there, there was this little future section where where we we presented this notion of could the could the body could 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 there be these flying suits in the air? So you pull down a flying suit now. When when you wear it, you have these kinds of fibers. So your fibers get together with another person's fibers, or uh, waste goes out of your fibers. Food come, food, food comes in. Uh, uh, you, you as this, uh, the person as this fiber-bearing instrument can now act as a kind of, as a kind of vehicle. Uh, the next step further, the next step out from clothing is uh, you take utensils, appliances. Uh, a few years ago, Alessi asked us, Alessi, the Italian design company, asked us and a number of, a number of other architects to design a coffee, a coffee tea set. Uh, uh, what what Alessi asked for was uh, uh, four four, con uh, four containers for coffee, milk, tea, and sugar, and a tray. We thought if we did something good enough, maybe we wouldn't need a tray. So we started with a general idea of a sphere, took parts away until all that's left is uh, is four compartments. Uh, the darker ones are uh, coffee and tea. The the white ones milk milk and sugar and these transparent connectors uh, so you could hold it by by the by the by the transparent in uh, the transparent in between space uh, those transparent places hold cups and saucers so you take the cups and saucers out this spheroid has four flat points you roll it to a flat point so it's stable now you put the cup inside press the cup up now you have coffee you roll it to another flat point. Now you can have milk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Next step. Next step up is for next step up. And when I say up, away from person to others. That's not necessarily up. Maybe it's across. I mean, person might be just as valuable as 20 people. Uh, uh, this, this was a this was a a, a a a bench we designed and made in 2000 2001 based on the notion of a Moe, of a Moebius strip. So a Moebius uh, a Moebius strip by twisting seems to have one side and another side. Uh, the back of our bench twists to become the to become the seat twists to become the bottom of the bench. You can sit outside the circle. You you move over a little bit. You're now you're now inside the circle. The notion of furniture is on our minds a lot, though we we haven't done, we haven't done, we haven't done enough of it. So I just want to show some beginning things uh, by by using by by using strips of felt and placing them vertically. They can be firm enough maybe to hold the body as a seat, but you can have them apart so you can store things. They can be a kind of a kind of container. Uh, can you make a desk maybe by by filling a material full of holes? Some of the holes are for are for storage. Some of the holes might be might be for people. Okay, again going going further away from single person. Uh, this is a clothing store we did we did it we did in Tokyo uh, in two th in 2003. We tried to make a clothing store that was as that was as uh, as 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 soft 
as, as, as soft as clothing, as soft as skin. So the material we use was PVC, material that's usually used for projection screen, rear screen projection. So it's soft, it's, it's, it's plastic, but it's almost like, like fabric. So we put PV, PVC on the ceiling, pull it down to make a wall, pull it out to make a, to make, to make a counter. The whole method is a push and pull system. Attach, attach the PVC to the wall, now pull it out, pull it out as, as, as taut as possible, oops, sorry, pull it out as, 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 ta as taut as possible so now it can, now it can carry, carry, carry products. Because this is rear screen projection material, we don't have to light it from outside, we can have the light, we can have the light, the light inside. It's a very small, small space. Uh, it's 15 feet wide and at its widest, widest, uh, and at its longest, 45 feet long. So we thought we needed to use all the extra space we could possibly get. Every time there's, uh, any time there was a, a, uh, uh, a non-structural wall, which we, we took the wall out and made this uh, curving glass alcove outside, outside the store so you would have extra room for racks of for racks of clothes, uh, the the uh, the. Uh the 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 building that that these young designers uh, United Bamboo they practice they practice in New, in New, in New York this was going to be their fir their fir their first store they were afraid that the the building was made of a modular system that in Japan is usually used for residences so the United Bamboo people were afraid that uh, this was never going to this was never going to look like a store it was always going to look like look like a house so we we tried to use this simple and relatively cheap method by covering the whole store with a with a steel mesh, then making making openings for 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 bulging walls. The the uh, the clothing store is on the ground floor, offices on the top floor. Uh, the bulging. The bulging front on the top floor is used for a projection screen, and the way it works is when you're inside, if you're trying on United Bamboo clothes, if you like the way you look, you can press a button at the mirror, and now you become the model for the Uni United Bamboo, Bamboo clothes. Okay, next step uh, away from person is a notion of build, building. These are two unbuilt buildings. Uh, most of our projects are unbuilt. Uh, maybe we, but maybe, but this, this doesn't only apply to apply to us. I mean, it doesn't apply to SOM or HOK. But even Rem, Rem, Rem Kulhas has said to me recently that maybe he builds 15% of his projects. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's possibly a little a little more now. We, we're we're probably down to down to 12. Uh, uh, this was a. Uh, this was a this was a project that that uh, these two brothers in Greece asked us for. They wanted they wanted a second house for each of them. Uh, it, when when I went to see the site, it was uh, strangely it was the first time I had ever been to Greece, had ever been to Athens. I was struck by struck by the 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 the, the kind of everyday balcony life. Uh, balcony life in Athens. So what we proposed was a house made of made of two in, two intersecting spirals, the uh, so that the uh, the balcony of one brother's house would become the roof of the other brother's house, and vice and vice and vice and vice versa. Uh, a competition entry we made a few year, a few years ago for a for a museum. Uh, excuse me for a library in Guada, in Guada, in Guadalajara uh, uh, we, our, our proposal which wasn't accepted was uh, was to step down into the ground to make a kind of plaza once we've stepped down now we start to step up 
We step up to make the building. There's a uh, there's a high, there's there's a there's a highway. There's a highway near the, near the library. So as we step up, we step out. We step out and across the highway. This came from this came from uh, part of the stipulation of the uh, of of the competition where it says we should we should try to we should try to account for growth in the future. I know they didn't mean it that 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 li that literally, but what we wanted to try. Okay. Um. Uh, going away from buildings, you're on you're on you're on the street. Uh, a few years ago, uh, New York City had a competition for a new light post. Uh, uh, what they specified was that the new light post, the new light post uh, had to hold uh, many different kinds of lights, many different kinds of signs. So it had to be a very thick post. Sometimes we try to question what the competition suggests. Suggest and we thought, but they're not going to need all those different signs, all those different lines everywhere. So we thought, why don't we try to do the opposite? Let's make the thinnest possible post. Each post holds one light, one sign. So when you need more, you, you can twist and braid these thin posts together. Uh, twist and braid the twin posts together so you can have as many different kinds of lights as many many different kinds of uh, signs as you, as you, as you need. Uh, uh, also something on the street, uh, a, a, subway, a subway station. This was an old subway station in, Co in Coney Island that we were asked to redo. And we tried to use, we tried to use the nearby, nearby Coney Island and Ocean and Amusement Park as a kind of model. Uh, uh, we, we could, uh, we could we could think of the waves 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 of the ocean, so we could make waves on the upper story coming down coming down to the lower to the lower story. Uh, these waves become kinds of bulges. The facade bulges in and out. It reaches a breaking point, so now it has now it has a view. So, uh, sometimes the bulges don't reach a breaking point. They remain closed but now they act now they act as seating you can sit within the wall of the facade or sit on a part of the uh, part of the facade that comes that comes that comes out out from the wall uh, <clears throat> uh, Okay, going further away away from the city to maybe the outlands of the city. This is a river that runs through that runs through uh, the city of Graz in in Austria. We were asked to use to use the river as a place for a a person a person made island, and the person made island was to have three functions: a theater, a cafe, and a playground. So we started with the we started with a with a kind of uh, conventional idea for for a bowl for for a theater, a bowl. What if we twist the bowl? The bowl turns upside down, becomes a dome. So if the bowl is a theater, the dome is the the dome is the restaurant, the cafe, uh, uh, the twisting space from bowl from bowl to dome, and vice versa becomes 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 the playground. It's lit at night. Light, lights come up from the uh, theater seats. Light shine, light shines down. Light shines down from the restaurant, from the cafe. Uh, here you're in. Here you're in. Here you're in the theater. The, it's starting to change from from uh, from bowl to do, to dome. Uh, we knew that this wasn't always going to be used as a theater, so we thought if we made the seats straight, people would always be facing straight straight ahead. If we made the if we made the seats in waves in curves, maybe we could have an everyday public place person to person face to face seats. This is the this is the, uh, sorry going from uh, from 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 bowl to dome, uh, the play the playground is at is at the is at the, is at the, at the roof. People entering entering I'm oh, sorry, entering the cafe. Uh, I have to. 
here's my here's my light again sorry we tried to make the inside as twisting and turning as the out, as the outside so you walk under under a, under a canopy the canopy uh, you, you come in the door under a canopy the canopy comes down and makes lounge seating around 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 the dome uh, uh, there's also there's also movable seating stacking uh, stacking seating uh, also on the notion of uh, with that same notion of of a space probably a little bit outside 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 the city uh, this was a we have we like like probably every architect have many many projects that they seem definite Definite to be built, but they weren't. This was supposed to be a uh, a uh, a skate park in San Juan, in Puerto in Puerto in Puerto in Puerto Rico. Uh, the when, when I when I went to see the site, there were three high points in this uh, on this on the site. So the way we we started thinking was, it's as if the skate park is already there. We just have to fit out. These 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 high points, and make ways from one one high point down up to another up to another high point. So the first high point is a pedestrian ramp over a over a over a over a restaurant. So what we proposed was on each side of the pedestrian of the pedestrian ramp, we have these this snake run of ramps for uh, for skate for skaters what we what we were really committed to was the idea that we didn't want a place for skateboarders separate from 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 pedestrians in the park we wanted to attempt to mix pedestrians and skateboarders so uh, skateboarders would be on either side of pedestrians or possibly under pedestrians this was an early drawing they could, they, that jump could never be as high as this uh, the second uh, the second high point was a cone was a cone shaped hill the ramps now from the from the snake from the, the snake run of ramps goes towards the uh, cone shaped hill uh, instead of going over the hill, the ramps go inside the hill. So the bowls of our skate park, our, of our skate park, are in the inside, are in the inside, inside of the hill. Uh, third high point is this slope, uh, where our ramps now start to step up the slope, making what what skateboarders at least used to call street street elements. At the top of the slope is a plateau that looks over looks over looks over the ocean and there the ramps become quarter pipes and ha and half and half pipes it's the kind of site we'd probably never get again so uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why we you know we try to make uh, we try to make we try to make things specific to pl to places um, this is an, another kind of park, uh, 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 a, play, a playground. The, 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 this was first proposed. We were asked to propose it for a branch of the UN uh, who would, wanted to do children's playgrounds. Uh, this is a kind of three-dimensional uh, three version of a, Moebi, of a Moebius strip. It's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's what it's what mathematicians refer to as a as a top topological space the, the really interesting thing about a topological space is that if you if you place if you place an ant say an ant that does it to a, a creature that doesn't have wings inside it will gradually get to the outside or vice or vice versa so the notion of a topological space has the notion of a kind of endless space a kind of continuous space we thought it was an appropriate model for a playground because if we made the if we made the walls transparent, if we uh, if we perforated the walls, uh, children climbing inside could meet, come face to face with children climbing climbing outside. You could you could you could slide from inside to outside and vice and vice versa. Okay, uh, uh, last part of the talk that I'll try to try to do try to do quickly. Uh, Thank you.
Uh, we tend to think in terms of uh, in terms of different kinds of operations. Maybe this possibly comes from from the grounding of my work in 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 action in in performance. We we tend to think of we tend to think of architecture. We tend to think of places not so much as nodes, stopping places, but maybe more active than that, circulation places. Uh, uh, there, there, there's, a, there's a set of maybe 20, 20 or so op operations. Uh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go to, uh, through a few, and I didn't take the I didn't take the, the list with me, but I probably know them well enough. I don't know their numbers, but but let's say uh, operation number one: make a world, then make a whole, then make a hole in the world, uh, and ar an architecture of holes. We, like many other people, made a uh, made a uh, an uninvited proposal for for a new World Trade Center uh, when Max Protesch Gallery was was existent. It was one of the the only galleries in New York that 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 showed architecture. So he asked about 100 people, 150 people, to propose a World Trade Center. We proposed a World Trade Center full of holes. Our premise was that if a building nowadays is going to be exploded anyway, maybe a building nowadays should come already exploded, pre-exploded. Pre so we took the original site of the World Trade Center, uh, uh, 110 stories high, more, more private office space than anybody could possibly need. So we could shoot cones into it, uh, making it a building full of holes. It can act as a kind of urban camouflage. A terrorist might fly by above and look down and say, "We don't have to. We don't have to worry about this building. It's already. It's already been dealt with." Now that the building is full of holes, uh, the rest of the city can come inside. The holes make tunnels from outside to inside. So inside the building now, uh, parks can come inside. Street vendors can come inside. In other words, uh, in, in uh, uh, instead of accepting the convention that you can build, the building can be built a few stories higher if you have a so-called public space outside. I, I don't know if single-minded spaces can work. Maybe if there's a mix where, where one one space one one kind of space can 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 maybe argue against the, against against the other. So those those col that column on the left is an elevator shaft going from office to office the white columns are are, are waterfalls going from going from park to park to park to park uh, I don't know I mean th this can go a little longer but should we stop and have que and and have questions or should I try to continue great okay and I'll try to I'll try to talk even faster than I've been talking uh, this is another of those projects that was supposed to be built, uh, but this past summer we realized it wasn't. It was more of a public public art project. The site is in Norway in a city called Stavanger, probably the the richest Western city in the world because there's there's a lot of oil fields in the in the in the, in the water. Uh, a concert hall was 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 designed, and there was an amphitheater. An amphitheater was designed facing it. Then there was the worry that, what are people going to do when there isn't when there isn't a concert? Uh, so they had a competition saying, how can we turn? How can how can this uh, this amphitheater, this audience space, be turned into a more of a meeting a meeting place? So we won we won the competition. What we proposed was to run this system of rivers and rivulets down down the steps, down the down the seats of the amph of the amphitheater. So they cut through the steps. So you can sit facing front, but if there isn't a, if there isn't if there isn't a concert, if there isn't a stage event, or even while there is, you can now have person to person contact. Uh, our, our our urge is always to try to have this mix of a kind of private private space with a with a public 
space. Uh, uh, a project that hardly, that hardly got started a few a few years ago, in a uh, in a in a in a village in the south of France, in the Ardèche. It's in the, it's in the mountains. For us, it was very rare. We're always asked to do places to do things to do projects in cities. This was a village of 400 people, and the mayor the mayor had decided that the. Uh, the village is very connected to its space, but it's lost sight of its time. So we got this great message, but it wasn't really carried out. But the great message was, uh, can we bring this village, Beaumont, into the, tw into the 21st century? Uh, as I said, it's in it's in the hills, it's in the it's in the mountains. Uh, a lot of farming exists there, and the only way they can farm is to is to terrace the hills, which made us think, uh, which made us think, can we use terracing for housing? Uh, what they had asked us for were ten or twelve new houses, so we would have houses that were half inside inside the hill, half half outside. So it would be warm. Warmer, warmer in the winter, uh, uh, cool, uh, 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 cooler in cooler in cooler in the in the in the summer. So we started with these long ideas, and then we with these long lines of housing. But we realized we're thinking too much of cities. We're thinking too much of apartments. So then we thought, well, can we can we can we make them more singular? But then it never it never went further because a, a strange stipulation was made. We were told that we could do design development development drawings, which are kind of like the more the most advanced drawings before a project is built. But they said we can do that. Then another architect would come in, which is kind of normal since uh, you know we might be able to build in the United States, but we. We can't build where you know where our licensed architect doesn't have doesn't have a license. Uh, uh. But but here the the competition stipulated that we could only design the project up to design development. Once the French architect comes in, then he can change whatever we have. And we thought we we just don't build enough that we want something something we build to be to be changed. Uh, uh, I, I've I, I've stopped mentioning the oper the, oper the, the, the the operations, the the uh, the Norway project. The operation was split and separate. Uh, uh, this is a kind of folding 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 operation. Uh, uh, it was an invited competition for a museum in Perm in Ru in Russia. Uh, I want to go back to that to that first slide. The museum, the the place of the museum was at the top of the slope. Uh, we we started by saying, but the slope is so strong. How can you, how can you possibly ignore that slope? So we thought, let's think of the slope as a kind of call call of the wild. The the museum starts at the top of the slope, but then starts to come down, comes down, comes down the slope. There's a bridge, it goes under the bridge. There are train tracks, it goes over the train tracks, makes a railroad station, goes into, goes into the water. Like a lot of competitions, nobody, nobody, nobody won. Around, around the set, that, that, that happens in like 70% of competitions. Uh, uh, this this was around the same time, though it still might it still might be possible. It's a uh, it's a it's a city in the north of France, Boulogne-sur-Mer. There's a large fishing port in the uh, in the in the city. Uh, people uh, the 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 mayor of the city worried that nobody knows about the port, so they wanted us to make a kind of visitor's trajectory through the through the port. At one point. Our, our trajectory goes across a body of water. Uh, we tend to like things that we, that have multiple functions. We had to make a bridge, but we thought maybe it could double as a re as a restaurant. So this long counter at the left at the left at the left of the bridge becomes a place to get to get food. Uh, uh, this body of water is a lock. 
so ships come in. Uh, we worked with engineers, Bureau Happold, to try to make a retractable bridge that could still keep people on it when it had to retract. So when, when ships when ships come in, the bridge the bridge starts to starts to coil up coil up like a snake. You know? So it's still a restaurant, but now instead of a long restaurant, it's a kind of cluster restaurant. Uh, another part another part of the site was a place that they wanted a park. We thought a park near the ocean should be different than a park on dry land. So what we first proposed was uh, uh, a pipe system would take water under the under the under the under the ground. The tide here uh, rises and falls 30 feet each day. So now the rising and falling tide changes the position of furniture in the park. At low, at low tide, the amphitheater goes down, goes, goes down into the ground. At mid tide, there's no amphitheater. At high tide, the, amphithe the, amphitheater, the amphitheater rises up. The notion of change is probably the most important thing, thing for us. Uh, you know, what the, the most horrible thing about architecture is when you design architecture you're also designing people's behavior in architecture. So that architecture is probably inherently a totalitarian activity. We hope it can be something else. We hope that people can, cha can change their space. This was an ideas competition for the city of Strasbourg in France. Ideas competitions call for people to give possible ideas, but maybe nothing will be, will be built yet. Something might be, might be built later. We tried to propose what we called a plaza of plazas. Uh, it, could it could always change. There were these arcs with roofs. The, roof, the, the place of the roofs could be changed. There'd be, uh, there'd be track embedded in the ground so all the furniture could be moved. Chairs could be moved next to other chairs. Uh, tables can be put together for a, mar for a marketplace. Uh, the notion of of, port of portability is, is important to us. Uh, the notion, I think, the future of, the future of architecture is probably a, a, move, a movable architecture. Uh, we tried to work on this car that wouldn't need wheels. Uh, uh, we we stopped because uh, we started to think this is fantasy. We love science. We love science fiction. We're no real, real, real fans, real, real fans of uh, of of fantasy. It's based on a science or maybe a pseudoscience called cymatics, where inserting sound into planes makes the planes ripple. So the base of our car would be. Uh, would be would be these planes. The, uh, sound would be inserted inside. Uh, we were working with a uh, we were working with a with a with a physicist at MIT who said he's pretty sure he could get the car to move 15 miles per hour. And that's when we thought, well, maybe uh, maybe that's maybe that's not that's not that's not enough. But there were some things that we would love to take to take forward. It would be a kind of soft car uh, taking the notion of airbags and having the outside something like airbags so that uh, maybe the best thing is not to resist impact but try to bend and yield with, the, with impact. Also in the future maybe not everybody has to drive so the car is plugged together. One person drives, everybody else goes, everybody else goes, goes, goes to sleep. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we were asked to do a proposal for the Olympic Stadium for the next London Olympics. We didn't. We didn't win, but we we tried to propose a kind of parasite. It, it, it's a, a stra the the uh, the uh, the stadium is in a kind of strange strange position. After the the Olympics, it was it was going to be take, taken down. So we thought, why don't we propose these kinds of pavilions that. Uh, that that kind of act as a leech 
on the stadium, and it also carries the Olympic flame so that everybody in the stadium now can see the Olympic, the Olympic flame. Uh, but after, after the stadium is taken down, the pavilions become, become an apartment complex so that it would still have some kind of, some kind of, some kind of use, use afterwards. This is a project that uh, well, we think is about to be built now. In, Indian, in, in Indianapolis, uh, it's a tunnel. It's a tunnel through a through a building. Uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 tunnel is a different volume of of color at in morning and after in afternoon and 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 that and that night. Uh, when when you when you bicycle. Oops, this is supposed to go on, but uh, uh, okay. Thank you. You told me you told me that before. When you walk through or bicycle through, there's a uh, there's a there's a kind of mesh system inside. It doesn't seem to be. <laughs> the, I know you said you had to wait for the animation, but I think we're waiting. I think we're waiting too long. So maybe I should just 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 describe it. Uh, uh, there's a oops, sorry. Uh, there's a there's a mesh system inside that holds thousands of, L, of LED lights. So when you when you bicycle through, when you walk through, you activate sensors that turn on these lights that that surround you like a swarm of fireflies. So as you're walking through, you have these lights around you. You come you come you come towards another person who has his or her own lights, so the lights start to mix. It was maybe a small way that we could, we could try to make a space that's, uh, that's, that's always, always, always changing. Uh, these are some, 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 some of the last projects we've, we've, been, we've been working on. Uh, this was a project where it, it, it was, a, again, a, small uh, competition of five people for a solar park in Bu in Buffalo they had they had a gift of old solar panels but they were very old solar 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 panels that that are, that were very opaque we worked we always work with with con with consultants especially on projects that we think we ju we just don't know enough uh, so we work we work often with uh, a robotics engineer who said Said that if we made holes in the solar panels and ran through straw-like tubes, we could we could get reflections of the sky down uh, down onto the ground. If we made water in the ground, that would act as a kind a kind of reflecting pool. So it was a way to get it was a way to bring the sky down to the down to the down to the ground. This was a proposal uh, that Guggenheim asked a number of a number of architects to uh, design a new Guggen, uh, Guggenheim, but only only in only in the mind. Uh, we we started with the notion that you know sometimes when you when you're walking on the ramp, this is such an incredible space that you think if you threw yourself off the edge, maybe you wouldn't die. You know, <laughs> maybe you would fly. You know, so so we so we proposed that the space would be filled with things almost like rubber bands or a spider web. So you would step out and you could walk it walk in the void. Uh, uh, a project we're, work, we're working on now in Japan. I mean, some of the, these operations, maybe it's enough to name them. Uh, uh, can we have an architecture of kinds of kinds of pins and needles, kinds of kinds of tubes? Uh, that notion of tubes, I brought it up in an, er in an earlier project. So it could be it could be it could be ways to bring to bring to bring light down. Uh, a project a project in in Santiago and Chile, where uh, there's this possibility we can redesign a plaza that's in that that 
that's in Santiago, but our plaza would be under, under, underground, under the ground of the existing plaza. And I, it, it's something that's, that's very much on our, on our minds now. I don't think that the plaza is a workable, is, and I think a lot of people think this, is a workable public place now. It's too large. In a space so large, you can never, you can never think for yourselves. You can only follow, follow a leader. In, in a place where there are 100 people, 200 people, 300 people, uh, uh, only a leader could bring these people together. Otherwise, they just, they just, it, it's too large a group to converse with each other. So we're trying to, to divide a plaza space into what we call these cluster spaces. Each space would be a place for, say, three people, five people, probably no more than eight people. When there's so few people, they don't need to ask each other's permission to talk. They can talk really with each other other. So maybe a new public space is made of multiple more pro more private like like spaces. So a person in a group in a cluster of five people stays there a while but now goes to another cluster. So people people interchange and maybe that's the way there can be a kind of self-organizing. Self-organizing I think is the most important. You know, I'm so afraid that architecture is a kind of totalitarian an activity that there has to be a way where maybe architecture can help people think for think for themselves. Okay, we ran through some stuff, but why don't we have the lights and see and see if we can talk.